So this video is going to be about DNA replication. So the first thing we need to think about in replication is something called the origin of replication. So the origin of replication is going to be a stretch of DNA that has a very specific nucleotide sequence. And so at that particular nucleotide sequence, proteins are going to be able to recognize that sequence and that's where they'll go to bind to actually start this process of DNA replication. And so the first thing that they're going to do is they're going to open up something called a replication bubble, which we have right here, these quite literal bubbles in this DNA molecule. So at either end of the replication bubble, we have something called the replication fork. And so that's the area where these strands of DNA are actually being pulled apart from one another. And so like I said, that's on either end of this replication bubble. So once we have that bubble open, now we can have some different proteins come in to uh, assist with this process. So the first one that we really need to look at is helicase. So helicase is going to come in and it's going to untwist this double helix at this replication fork. So it's going to start pulling those strands apart. So when it does that, since DNA molecules are double uh, helices, the turns on either side of the replication fork are going to get tighter and tighter and closer together because we're starting to pull it apart in the middle. And so to relieve some of that tension, we need topoisomerase. So topoisomerase is going to come in and it's going to relieve that tight twisting ahead of that replication fork um, and loosen that up so we don't get any strand breakage or anything like that. So we're also going to have these single-stranded binding proteins come in. And so they're going to bind to these single-stranded uh, DNA molecules right here and prevent them from repairing with one another, as well as keep them stable um, in this uh, unpaired form. So moving on to actual DNA synthesis, no DNA synthesis can take place without the presence of an RNA primer to begin with. And so primase is going to be responsible for laying down this initial RNA primer. And so it's the first part of any of these newly synthesized DNA strands. So once we have that primer down, now polymerase can come in. And so polymerase, which we can see right here, is what's going to be responsible for actually adding nucleotides to the three prime end of this RNA primer. So DNA synthesis always, always, always goes from five prime to three prime. So we start at the five prime end, which is going to be um, right here on our RNA primer. And then we add new nucleotides to the three prime end. So we're synthesizing from five to three. And that is always going to be the case. And so um, we need that RNA primer though to be there for polymerase to come in and actually add to the end of it and keep synthesizing this new molecule. So in DNA replica replication, just as in the structure of DNA, the two strands are anti-parallel, we keep that same um, anti-parallel uh, quality when we're doing DNA synthesis and we elongate in anti-parallel directions. So when we do this, we're gonna have two kinds of strands. We're gonna have a leading strand and we're gonna have a lagging strand. So the leading strand in this example is right here on the top because we can put um, our RNA primer right here and so that will be our five prime end. And then we can just add to the three prime end and keep that going as we continually pull this replication fork um, apart and continue to separate these strands. And so this one, there's no pauses in the replication of this DNA molecule. And so this is our leading strand. So down here on the lagging strand though, so in this case, uh, the three prime end is the one that's closest to the replication fork. And so we lay down our five prime end of the primer and synthesize from five prime to three prime. But as we synthesize, new DNA gets exposed as this uh, replication fork continues to open. So we can see that right here. So at one point, this was right at the replication fork. Then it opened up and the second primer had to get laid down to account for this new DNA. And so this is going to be the lagging strand. So the lagging strand is going to be synthesized in fragments that are called Okazaki fragments but still that replication is taking place from five prime to three prime. So in a replication bubble, so this is only half of a replication bubble. So with this side of the replication fork, the leading strand is on the top, the lagging strand is on the bottom. But if we could see the other side of the replication fork, then the uh, lagging strand would be on the top on this end and the leading strand would be on the top uh, or on the bottom on this end. So within a single replication bubble, it kind of makes an X of where the leading strands are and where the lagging strands are. 
So ligase, this is going to be our final step. So ligase is going to join the sugar phosphate backbones of the Okazaki fragments um, to the uh, initial um, primer right here. So the uh, ligase is going to come in and it's going to connect these two pieces right here. It's going to fill in that gap so that now we've created a complete DNA molecule. I hope you found this video really helpful. All images, unless otherwise stated, are from Campbell Biology's 11th edition. Remember that if you are an enrolled Baylor student, we do offer free tutoring on the first floor of the Sid Richardson building. You can schedule a free one-on-one 30-minute -on -one appointment, or you can drop in during uh, any of our normal business hours. For more details, visit www.baylor.edu tutoring.